Today's guest spends a lot of time running around a field. <laughs> he's not a fairy. He's also not from Twilight. He is, of course, a future Springbok, a future Hall of Famer, and a current <laughs> good guy. Nama, it's so good to have you. Welcome. Yeah, it's finally happened, Sam. Thanks for having me and Chloe. Uh, yeah, I like the, the introduction. You do like the introduction. <laughs> I mean, do you ever go home and be like, I spent a lot of time just rolling around in grass today? I actually always joke that what I do for a living is chasing an oval ball around the field. So, yeah. Well, there you have it, Chloe. Okay, that's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. When was the last time you were chasing an oval ball around a field, Chloe? Oh. You strike me more of a frisbee player, mm -hmm. like kind of. I do enjoy frisbee. Group of your whitest friends chasing around the frisbee. ultimate frisbee. That's what we used to play on church camp, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, ultimate frisbee. It was like the game. Yeah, but obviously you, you you're looking at this beautiful man in the middle, and you go, "Who is Nama?" And Nama is, of course, a professional rugby player. I finally have roped him in, as he said, finally, because I've been courting him for months. We met on <laughs> Tinder and I was like, you got to come on, you'll love this. So you're currently playing your rugby where, Nama? Um, so I'm currently playing at uh, Western Province, uh, Curry Cup and you know, the Stormers and, and the URC. Beautiful. I, it was, I boast about this to everyone that when we, I was trying to set up our, da our date, you know, where we get to do this <laughs> wonderful dance in front of the, the Kets faithful, is that I sent a date and a time and you're like, ah, oh, sorry, playing in the Curry Cup. I was like, if that's not the coolest message I've ever <laughs> yeah. received. I think you yeah. can use that any time. <laughs> sorry, Ma, playing in the Curry Cup. But anyway, everyone's always fascinated where people come from. And I think we can all unanimously agree we come from our mothers. But outside, yeah, come on. You got to get the first one off the back quite early. Um, where are you from, though? Okay, so I'm from a small town in the northern of KZN called Freyd. Yeah, a very small farming town. Yeah. Just, and do you come from yeah. a family of farmers that sort of... No, no, no. I don't come from a family of farmers. So my dad used to work. Um, there's a correctional service facility in Nomi. You guys, I'm sure, have heard of Blood River, the Battle of Blood River. So I uh, run about that area. Um, then when he retired, we actually moved to Freyed. Okay. And my oh. mom is a paramedic there. So, yeah. Oh, well, wow. That's where I grew up. Yeah. Chloe, were you wow. expecting yeah. that correctional yeah. service? Yeah. I, I was. I got a bit not. scared. I was like, oh, I smoked a bit of weed <laughs> earlier. Now I might. <laughs> I had to take the edge off, but he might report me. <laughs> <laughs> so, when did you end up in Cape Town? Sure, it was yeah, quite a journey coming to Cape Town. Mm -hmm. um, uh, long story short, from Freyd, I went to school in Durban. Yeah. Cambridge. And then from Glenwood, um, I went to Stellenbosch as part of my gap year at the Western Province under 19 Institute while still like existed. And then from there, came to UCT. Ah, oh, nice. So that's nice. how I ended up in Cape Town. Ah, yeah. the is Stellenbosch's that, rival. Is that, yeah. is, that, um, is that Western Province Rugby Institute defunct? Defined, defunct. Um, <laughs> I also thought I was like, did I say yeah. defunct? <laughs> no, it, it, it's not. It's not an operation anymore. Oh, not functional. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah they stopped it like uh, a few years back. I think like three years back. When you left, you're like, you nah, I never. No, I think yeah, we uh, I think the second to last year. It was really fun. Yeah, great uh, gap year option. Yeah, I really uh, enjoyed uh, my yeah. time. Yeah. It's not an yeah. option for yeah. you. You're not a, a multi-talented sportsman. Yeah. You are at home watching yeah. or listening yeah. to a podcast. And oh boy, do we, we thank you for that. We haven't got a Wikipedia page just yet. And we keep trying. I mean, maybe start one. Be, uh, you know, we'll send you free non-existent merch. Um, have you checked out your Wikipedia page? Because... Chloe did, Chloe did her research. Yeah. No, it's like the second thing to pop up. I was like, damn, a yeah. Wikipedia page. First of all, it's important to note that, yeah, Wikipedia is not true. Um, <laughs> but yeah, a couple of times I have. I'm not going to lie about it. Um, okay. yeah, I have, yeah. There's certain rumors see, going. Like, a few articles. Yeah. Like the new articles. I don't know. Okay. But the rumors are that you, you, you're writing a lot of the entries. Um, Those are yeah. the rumors. I don't want to like, confirm or deny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't catch me. Yeah. Okay. Well, we thought that maybe we would go through some of your Wikipedia facts, and you can tell us if <laughs> if they got it right or not. Wow. Okay. <laughs> just from just from reading, I don't know if you've checked up on it recently. Oh, no, it's not recent. Um, but yeah, the first one is that you're five eleven. No, that is not true. <laughs> no. Or are you trying to insult me because I might be around five eleven? <laughs> Um, what, uh, it's like the American system. 
No, no, no. I think. What is five eleven? Over six foot? No, no, no. J- no. just under. Painfully, no, 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 no. just no, no. short. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm not five eleven. Six foot. What are you? If I if I could guess, you know, just weighing you up here, prob- I, six um, four, six three. One eight four in meters. I sort of like bats were like converting it back and forth. No, so, no. yeah, one eight four. I think it's just over six foot. Six one. Yeah. Let's call it that. Really? Like one eight five or six one. Oh Jesus! Yeah. Then I'm definitely yeah. not yeah. six foot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been telling a lot of Tinder dates yeah. that I am six <laughs> foot. Why do you think Chloe's still here? Solid five eleven. Yeah. Oh no! What What's the shortest you date, Chloe? We touched on this ages ago, but I mean, are you that sort of shortest? You... I'm not as shortest. No, I think I I just like someone to be the same height or taller than me. Okay, that does sound pretty racist. Another Wikipedia <laughs> thing that popped up is that you're a vegan. True or false? <laughs> no, I'm not a vegan, but I see where maybe the misconception can come from. Um, With that beautiful I'm, jawline. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm sponsored by um, a vegan um, uh, supplement company, or it's just like plant protein. Okay. Uh, sports, so. hey, Nama, please, you don't yeah. want to see an apology letter yeah. saying, ah, oh, I had tainted supplements. Please, no, Nama. No, no. It's, all, please. Yeah, it's, it's very safe. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that's where the confusion comes from i love my meat but yeah plant protein <laughs> okay i'm gonna take a stab in the dark yeah. you know um it's gonna come off stereotypical maybe but you're from kzn yeah well is are, are you a zulu man of course okay yeah. and so are all the stereotypes about zulu men and meat true yeah definitely i'd say well we, <laughs> there you we, go we, if you we, we, lo- we love our meat i thought you were gonna talk about the other stereotypes Oh, so I'm glad that's the good one. Hey, no, yeah. come on, I'm white. I'm not yeah. that white. <laughs> Give me a chance. Yeah. No, because um, we have a friend, Buchle, who's also a fan of the podcast and been on the podcast. He speaks about stereotypes and how stereotypes are the best thing ever. Yeah. And he's like, but I'm also a bit petty, so I'm a coward. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know anything you're talking about. Because in Cape Town, we're like so far removed from... Yeah. Well, that's how we feel. Do you feel that way, Chloe? I do feel that way. What is the myth about Zulu people and meat that was it they like meat (laughs) (laughs) there's no and shaka zulu on the third day of the resurrection no there's there's nothing like that and the the last wikipedia entry and uh by far the the you know the most falsified is that you and rachel khaleesi used to date (laughs) <laughs> oh, let the record reflect just a no, bit of giggling that is false <laughs> that is false yeah. uh, I saw when um, the UCT rugby team went to Japan uh, when was that 2019 yeah end of 2019 end of 2019 yeah. coincided with the rugby world cup that a couple of the guys in the team just walked around pretending to be Sia no, that, that, that was very funny I think it was um Ches and Kobe and Seo Kulisi, yeah. I was actually with uh, Reino and, and Yasha, who were, who were players for UCT at the time. We went out, like, shopping. Yeah. And this random Japanese guy stops him, like, and starts calling him Cheslin and Sia, and they milked that opportunity. <laughs> the guy actually posted, tags Sia, and everyone, like, no, it was, a, it was a great laugh. It was very funny. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Chloe has been misidentified as well before on... Um, on TikTok, yeah. people say Lana Rhodes when they <laughs> you, you look at that naughty <laughs> smile. I love the job you That's do. right. Nama dab- dabbles in the da- uh, the dark arts. <laughs> With this aware, I know who that is, but yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Um, she's a great mother. Some would say the mother of the year, potentially. Yeah, potentially. Would you say that, Chloe? I'm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that. We we also like we we've touched on before with previous guests. We try to create art. And right now, you know, we might be doing a bit of a hack job at painting this portrait of, of Nama, but oh boy, we'll swing for the fences or, <laughs> well, I don't know, some paint br- <laughs> paintbrush reference. But I was epileptic growing up and I always thought I was going to be a springbok. Um, obviously, hasn't happened, still time. But you're kind of, and I won't say springbok because you know, oh, I'm under so much pressure now, but you, you're a professional rugby player. Do you ever go like, I've won the lottery here. Yeah, I'm I'm quite literally living one of the South African dreams. Yeah, definitely. I think from when I was six years old, I've never like, changed like what my what I want my career path to be. And it's always so I've been a rugby player. So yeah, I'm truly 
blessed um, to be living it. That's why like, every morning going to training, yeah, sort of like speaks like my mantra, like, yeah, I'm blessed to be doing this and I love what I'm doing. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I guess you can say I'm living the dream. Obviously, I'm a guy who's never satisfied, always want to achieve what the next uh, goal is and everything. But mm. it's always good every once in a while to stop and smell the roses and actually realize, hey, you've actually, you've reached where a lot of people, you know, have, haven't have been able to reach, whether it's like circumstance or sometimes it's also just by pure luck, you know. Mm. Mm. It's a lot, it's about a whole lot of things conspiring together. It's not always about your, how hard you've worked. It's about getting the opportunity. So, yeah, it's definitely a blessing. No, that, yeah. that's I awesome. say, fuck that. <laughs> if I was a professional rugby player, you wouldn't hear it's me talking about luck or blessings. I'm just the best in the business. No, it's, and I mean, that's, that's amazing that you do have such a sort of grounded response. And I, I can guarantee I wouldn't, Chloe will testify. I would be vastly different if I was a professional rugby player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I must say I think you're in the vast minority of people who've known what they wanted to be since the age of six. Like I had lofty ideas of what I wanted to be Didn't when I was six. Did you want to be a YouTuber? Like, no, that was like when I was ten. Okay. When I was six, I was going to be a professional ballerina. But that didn't oh, quite work out. No, so. <laughs> it happened. But not only that, you you do were set on what you're doing. But like you said, there's so few people that can do it. Mm. whether that is timing luck what what but i also think nah i think you can take a lot more what well, you didn't just fall into a a rugby setup i mean you you're the guy yeah no uh, say it nama no, say no, you're no, the guy I, 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 no, <laughs> say, no i feel i've worked hard for it but it's just being placed in the right um spaces at the right time which i obviously i think there's a, a whole lot of divine intervention i think God has placed me here and yeah, it's something that I see as a real blessing. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. You watch Nama play rugby on the weekend and you tell me if you think any luck's involved in <laughs> working here. <laughs> have you heard the term schnortis before? Schnortis? Mm. No, I have not. Well, there you go, Kirk, <laughs> yeah, that's for yeah. you. I just uh, yeah. said schnortis and uh, <laughs> I'm feeling in- yeah. Incredibly embarrassed. <laughs> Chloe, you got anything? Are you going to no? explain yeah. what that yeah. is? No, I think... I'm, I'm waiting for the explanation. I think we yeah. leave it there. Oh. I think, I think okay. we leave the schnauzers <laughs> there. Chloe, uh, has to save me. Anything from you? <laughs> <laughs> well, a big thing on the podcast, and I think that everyone knows, is I'm not the most clued up on sport. I probably couldn't really explain to you how rugby works. I watch it. Love watching it. I love the, I love the atmosphere, you know, gathering around with your family, but mm. couldn't really tell you what's going on. So Chloe's family doesn't watch a second of sports. I watch it by myself in like this cave. I feel very ostracized. Yeah. It's true. But I'm not really a man. So. Um. <laughs> More like a fun cave. Sorry, Chloe, as you were. You made my house sound so weird. I watch rugby in a cave. Um, but could you describe the position that you play to me? Sure. It's going to be difficult without me getting all excited. Yeah. I'm, I'm very... <laughs> Yeah, I'm very biased about um, the position I play because I think it's the most fundamental in rugby. But in a nutshell, it's it's about hard work um, playing where I play. So I'm an open side flanker, number six in South Africa, also in the world, it's uh, number seven. Yeah, we stuffed up the, the numbering system somehow. <laughs> um, ESCOM. <laughs> yeah, playing yeah, in no. ESCOM. But... Um, it's pretty much trying to secure a position for your team and mm. trying to mess up position for them. So that's trying just to mess up their sources. So like, yeah, the thing that happens the most in rugby are breakdowns. Um, that's when Chloe's someone, familiar with the old yeah. breakdown. So, so let me front. explain. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you can you can say you can say I'm in the front line. Yeah, the front line. yeah with the forwards and the okay. scrum. Um, so whenever someone gets tackled, there's like you a there. brief. Yeah, there's a brief moment where you can actually get the ball back for your team. And You've got to be what, disciplined yeah, in that moment, Chloe. And that's what we specialize in, trying to get the ball back. And the opposite, number six, will try prevent me from doing that. I got you. Um, but yeah, it's very generalized, but we the specialist in doing that. And obviously tackling. So it's based around working hard for your team to secure position. 
and mess up their position. I hope I've explained. No, it I think I got it. Chloe, I think the open side. Of the <laughs> yeah. yeah, come on. But um, yeah, Heinrich Brasso, eat yeah. your heart out, you yeah. piece of shit. No, no, obviously not. <laughs> the best way I can explain it, using Nama's okay. technical know-how and having watched rugby, you know, in the war, Chloe, rugby is a bit like war. It's attritional. I feel like this yeah. is mansplaining. This is not mansplaining. This is painting a picture. So in the war? In the war. When the women were at home. No. In the war, <laughs> you know, a grenade gets chucked over. As, yeah, as it happens. Someone's got to jump on the grenade. Yeah. They get their head, shoulders, neck, and body in a bad position. Yeah. To jump on a grenade. Yeah. And then after they jump on the grenade, a ref comes and says, Ooh, well done for jumping on the grenade. Now we're going to give the ball to the fly half. Yo. That's what Nama does. Okay, go in. <laughs> <laughs> so is that an oversimplification of World War II rugby, Nama? I think that's accurate. Thank you. I, I, is Nama a hero? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Speaking of uh, bizarre quotes, your profile picture on WhatsApp <laughs> is of Michael Scott, if Dunder Mifflin's greatest to ever do it and every time i message you i think i'm speaking to some crazy maniac because it's not just the picture of michael scott it's a meme it's like and what does that say can you take us through that because i think it's interesting you have no idea how high i can fly <laughs> obviously um the office fans will know the context when yes. he just quit um, <laughs> um, yeah, in David Wallace's office but yeah I've just like taken it out of context and yeah it's something I tell myself that yeah my potential is yeah I love can that. skyrocket yeah you literally have no idea how high I can fly obviously it's uh, it's uh, it's funny because Michael Scott said it but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I actually uh, I like that's what oh, the paradox of it I guess but yeah oh that's beautiful <laughs> it's I, funny yeah. because yeah. Michael Scott it, said it yeah. <laughs> it's funny because it's Michael Scott yeah. no and that's what I, I think I love the most about you is that you're always very pleasantly yeah. surprising in yeah. whatever aspect it is there is a word and people People who know you have heard this a million times. Scum. Where does that come from? Because I'm surprised you haven't said it on this podcast. Scum. Yeah, Nama calls everyone scum. I was trying to be formal for okay. the UK people listening. Oh yeah, the big, yeah. the international yeah. listeners. Yeah. Yeah. Don't they say no. scum the most? No, apparently scum is a bad word in the UK. It really? Like means like dirt, whatnot. Oh, like like, yeah, like literal so scum. scum. Like, oh yeah, no, literal scum. But I Actually, thought that's where you got it from. I had a friend from the UK who heard me saying, it's like, no, don't say that. You, you don't need to say that. And everything like, no, this is what... I think a white friend of mine said scum to me and she got touched. Jeez, um, classic whitey. But I tried to explain to her, no, listen, this yeah. is what we call, call each other. But where did you get it from? Um, so my high school, Glenwood High School, um, yeah. I don't know, for some reason, we are notorious. Um Obviously, we had that scandal of Siabonga Tom mm. being overaged in school. Um, but we're a very good performing sports school. Yes. Yeah, I think the, the best in KZN. Um, and our rugby was really good. So our headmaster um, used to tell us, uh, or used to call it like conferences or war cry conference <laughs> or AJ conferences, <laughs> to, you know, yes, fun before, before the game, yes. just yeah. to get amped, our amping sessions, yeah told us this one like speech that yeah, these other schools are calling us Dockside High with the Umbilo scums because we're right next to the hub and the area is called Umbilo or Umbilo as yeah, people who don't speak Zulu would say. And we sort of took that word. I think uh, guys were two years my senior. They took that word and sort of like made it our word. Mm. So instead of saying bro, we called each other scums. Wow. Like yeah, you're Umbilo That's scum, crazy. you're a scum. Pretty hectic how it started. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. pretty kind of racist. Sounds yeah. pretty racist yeah. to me. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Gee, and then you just owned it. Yeah, we just owned it. Like we just owned like the N word being owned, I yes. guess. Um, and after school, obviously, I was the only Glenwood boy going into uh, into the province setup. Mm. Then I just couldn't stop saying scum. <laughs> and then scum became my nickname. Everyone started calling me scum, but I still call people scum. <laughs> yeah. So that is a story around scum. Would you call someone like Chloe Scum? Um, no. <laughs> I don't call Chloe Scum. But I call you Scum. Yeah, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel that's yeah. fitting. I, I, I kind of <laughs> probably... Uh, I call all the boys Scum. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to call you. Chloe from now on Scumbag. 
<laughs> See, that, that is bad. That's I bad. really didn't yeah, think it was yeah. that bad of a word. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Who... Going back to my uh, plane flying over we've got, here. We've got the State of the Nation address in Cape Town tomorrow. And <laughs> basically, every year, the military are like, because we don't do anything for the rest Stop of the year, time. let's just fly all of our planes. Um, and that's also not true. They have done stuff in Mozambique and stuff. And yeah, come on. Don't, don't come for <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Um, allegedly. That's the new thing that we're just saying now. It can't come for us. Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> but um, I wanted to know, who is the best rugby player? That I've seen. We're currently playing yeah. or... You pick, you decide. You can see, you can see Chloe has never, ever oh, asked yes. this, a sports question before. In my opinion, it's Richie McCall. <laughs> really? Yeah. No, that I is... Don't know, I don't know who that is. Um, so Richie McCall was the All Blacks captain, I think from 2004 to 2015. Mm-hmm. He's the only person to have won the World Cup or twice or in a, in a row. Yeah. Um, like back to back. So he led his team 2011 and 2015. And the reason why I love him so much, obviously his influence in the game um, was just like crazy how he could like change the game. I'm probably just speaking like this whole jargon and everything. You don't understand. But I, think, I, think, I, think, I think Sam, 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 Sam was not for me here. Um, but he, that was the nicest, yeah, rudest yeah. thing that's ever, like, you know what? I'm wasting everyone's time. <laughs> Um, I get quite passionate when yeah. it comes to Richie Moko and yeah. David Pocock. Um, I know, I mean, the, yeah. the table rose a bit yeah. as he started speaking. Mm. I but I literally, I changed the way I play when I was in primary school because I was a big kid in the team. So I literally just passed me the ball and used to run yeah. over everyone. <laughs> then I got to high school and that wasn't the case anymore because everyone's your size. Mm. So like, okay, flip, I want to make it. So what could I do that's gonna keep me at the top and yeah. it was literally I tried to model my game around him so That's based so around like wit around the breakdowns and hard work so yeah I think he's the best player to have ever played he's quite awesome. he's quite unanimously yeah. referred to by rugby fans as as the GOAT as there the are goat. not too many people that have the same support for yeah. GOAT status yeah. as yeah. as Richie McCaw who's your yeah. favourite rugby player Clodog? um numb obviously <laughs> But because I don't want to be biased. I'm not holding a gun to Because I, yeah. I don't want to be biased. Oh, actually, I do have a story, right? So oh, here we go. This is when I was seven, okay? And we just played the World Cup, right? 2007. Yeah, I think checks I, out. I think the I facts, am right about yeah. that. The facts check out. Um, my dad let me stay up to watch it, and I had the biggest crush on, is it Percy? Percy Montgomery. Montgomery. Yeah. 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 I, but I was, keep in mind, I was seven, yeah. right? biggest crush on him i just thought he was so good looking so they did the tour you know down the down the road and they're waving i promise you he made eye contact with me and he waved at me and i was like <laughs> <laughs> his wife did step yeah, aside yeah, i've made it God, <laughs> no, let me not go to so, school i'm sorry his wife did step aside they got yeah. divorced i know i that was this was <laughs> this was before the controversy but oh, no. um yeah but when i i think the most I think the best rugby player in the world right now is Anton Dupont. Yeah. Dupont. Dupont. Oh, that's that's yeah, a Google are. search. That's, I, you, that's you a see me Google typing? search. I haven't been oh. typing. I'm oh. very clued up on this. No, I'm, I'm proud of you for knowing okay, that. Okay, that, uh, that is impressive. Rugby, okay. rugby IQ is up there. It's Thank good. you. But Percy Montgomery, in all seriousness, is he's, he's pretty close to SA Goatee Goats. Probably not, but he's definitely in that conversation and the school i was at oh my god are they not obsessed with this human being it's like hi welcome to where percy montgomery went to school you're like i don't play rugby <laughs> it's the really, first spring box in true so that's a big deal wow go to saxa you heard it here first from nama <laughs> we're gonna take our our usual short break and uh we'll be we'll be back in a flash and and we're back from the break okay nama how was your break Great. Enjoyable. Uh, brief. <laughs> brief. Yeah, yeah, we got talking about drugs. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> numbers never too, too um, far away from correcting people's behavior. Yeah. Chloe, have you ever tried drugs that Joe Rogan's been invested in? No. I'm talking about the N word. <laughs> 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 That's obviously not a drug. That is, um, can't say that. Did you see that stuff? Do you follow, do you follow um, a lot of contemporary stuff or are you kind of just like, 
I'm in the gym. I'm I know a lot about Joe Rogan's podcast. Mm-hmm. I know like, he got into trouble with that um, anti-vax stuff. Yes. Mm. Yeah, that's as far as I know. Okay. Yeah. They've now released like I've... a compilation video of him mm. over the years saying the N-word. And, and people, are, it's like some people are defending him, some people are losing their minds. I just thought maybe, maybe you'd heard of it. No, that's the first time I've heard of it. How much like entertainment stuff do you consume in the week? Or is it, is it um, really, you try and keep it not as boring as possible, but as like focused <laughs> to... Yeah, it's, it's sort of, um, you build up oh, a typical match week. You build up and then after that game, you can sort of like relax and probably like, you know, do the entertaining stuff. But I think, yeah, when the work is done, sort of like the analysis of the opposition and everything, yeah, I won't mind maybe watching... Uh, you're a serious 30 guy. 30 minutes of what? Of The Office or something on Netflix. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. so, like, yeah, something lighthearted, you know. Um, <laughs> if, uh, you f- I, if you find <laughs> that you might not feel like you're the most successful yeah. person in life, in life, it's because, well, Nama says you're only allowed 30 minutes of maybe <laughs> no. The Office. You know, otherwise you've got to be grinding. No, but that is also, ever since I met you, like painfully serious, just meticulous about the approach, all that sort of stuff. Would you ever consider leaking team sheets so I can make a bit of money? How much are you talking? <laughs> here we go. Here we no, go. I'm kidding. Um, is that a thing? I, I don't think that... Or is it? I think it is in sports, but mm. the rugby is too gentleman-like, if that's the right phrase, or uh, yeah, to be involved in that. Mm. I don't know, know. Hansi Kronjo yeah. was a gentleman until he wasn't. Mm. <laughs> Actually, that, mm. um, that Netflix, uh, what's that it called? That was crazy, yeah. Eh? Yeah. Bad sport. The bas- yeah, bad sport with the, the basketball players and everything. Oh, like oh, $10,000 just yeah. to miss a pass. Yeah, uh, yeah. I do that for free. No. <laughs> 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 I'll knock the ball yeah, on for no, free, it's, baby. It's, it's crazy. No, um, yeah, I don't think it happens in rugby. Mm. Oh, oh, I'd hope not. If it yeah. does, I know nothing yeah. about yeah. it. <laughs> Definitely not that. Mm. I think the most influential for that, excuse me, in rugby would be the fly half in terms of sort of conversions. True. Yeah. I don't know, but I've I've tried to bet on some of your games because I feel like I've got insider information, but just because I know you. <laughs> and then the rugby betting is pretty lame. It's not like fun like UFC where you're like KO round two. Uh, and that never happens. And I, I've, I've lost tens of rands. That's what I put. Chloe will tell you, I bet 10 rand on things. I'm, so, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Actually, I've had some disgruntled people who have bet on us. <laughs> Do you seriously? And then they come up to me and like, no, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know. But, God, yeah. what a terrible feeling. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Yeah, you just lost the rugby match. Yeah, hey, fuck yeah. you! I lost money. I'm like, oh. I was actually sitting down at a restaurant. I think it was a few weeks back. We lost to the Bulls. They pumped us, but the uh, boys fought back in the end. Um, and went to a restaurant. Then the owner comes up to me and says, "Hey, you lost me so much money." I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Is this a joke? Uh, it was being serious. Yeah, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. No yeah. tip. No tip. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you placed that yeah. bit. <laughs> oh no, yeah. God! That, do you f- do you now feel with like um, being more regular in the Curry Cup and URC setup, you get noticed more in public? Yeah, I'm not going to lie and say it hasn't happened. It, it has happened, but it's still pretty chilled. Do you worry about the experience you give the person? But just for like some context, I got my first person asking me for a photo and I was at the garage and it was, it was, it was, it was fun. I, but I, I felt so awkward after it because I was like, you know, that's so amazing that someone's, you know, wants mm. to take the time. I was like... Did he have fun? Was I very exciting for him? And like, I almost wanted to run back and be like, hi, so um, here's a joke, here's a joke. Um, nice car, ba ba ba. So do you ever yeah, feel that pressure? Like, um, yeah, I think I, I think I do. If you just look at the context of it, um, maybe for you, you probably meet uh, a couple of people, maybe a week, who come up to you, but especially in South Africa and well, I think it is like a bit cliche, but it's true that like rugby as a sport brings like a lot of hope. You saw with like mm. with the with the World Cup team. Yes. Mm. So like when you meet someone, it means like so much more to the person than you might actually think. Yes. Even maybe if I was like a youngster growing up and I'd meet um, 
Juan Smith or everything. Yes. I would have like lost it. Lost you know, the plot. Or, yeah, would have like yeah meant a lot to me. Yeah, so, it sounded like long term. You're saying that um, it was more exciting to meet you than it was to meet me. <laughs> um, but that's just what I'm hearing. Uh, let no, us no. know in the comments below. We should I just know. Uh, I don't know cancel Nama somehow. <laughs> what do you mean? Wow, wow. But you you touched on something very interesting there because rugby players, most sportsmen as well, have this bizarre period in their life where. They, for a short period of time or any period of time, they end up playing with their heroes just as you break out and as your hero kind of transitions into becoming a commentator. So who, who's the, like, the sort of biggest hero or someone you got into the field and you were like, fuck, I, like, you're like, I can't believe yeah. I'm putting on the same jo- or the same team yeah. and running out yeah. together. No, I'd, I'd say well, I was very lucky you know, as a junior at the Stormers we, when Sia was still there. Obviously, I've always like looked up to Sia. Um, even before he became the Springbok captain, like growing up, I remember watching his debut in 2013. I was like, yo, that's a black guy and playing well for the Springboks. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's my guy. So it was like sort of cool having him as like, uh, like in that mentorship role as well for me, like coming up the ranks at Providence, like definitely really like helped me a lot off the field. But I must say someone who I like when I was playing, I was like, flip, this is it. Um it was Peter Steph Dutoy. He's a mammoth of a player. He's he's amazing. He's got an engine of note. Also like um I did rehab with him for about yes. three months. So it was just mm-hmm. me, uh him and the physio. He doesn't speak much, but like yeah, every, <laughs> every moment I was like, yo, flip, I need to be on my A game. Like I'm, I'm training with Peter Steph. Mm. And actually like when I was playing with him on the field, I remember there was one point last year where uh, the Sharks made a line break and he, I was running back, jogging, obviously, and it was far from me. And like, <laughs> he literally shouted me like, come Nama. And like, no, Peter Steph told me to come. And I ran. <laughs> and at the end, in the last phase, I actually... He tackled and and the guy offloaded and I made the tackle and the guy knocked on and I was like wow that's like powerful that's elite because he told me come <laughs> and like we're tired like you like, <laughs> so yeah I'd say yeah Peter Steph and Sia mm. yeah. I'll never incredible. forget seeing you injured yeah. and being like you, you're going I was like how's yeah. how's rehab and you just said Peter Steph's killing me I was like yeah. what <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, literally it's a machine yeah. no yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. how how would you say you deal with Sam just touched on the injury? How would you deal with low points in your career or life? Or because you've had a, you've had yeah, a couple of I've had, bad ones. Yeah, I've, I've had a couple, and I think it was more realizing the more I had like the injuries and stuff. That obviously it's rugby, it's sports, it happens um, like to anyone. Mm. The, the unfortunate thing with sports is that the highs are really high and then the lows are like really, really, really yeah. low. Um, so it's just like a matter of like realizing like it's seasons and, and yeah, it's also, it's just, it's more about the person you become in the process. Obviously, you, you, you get to see who your real like support base and everything is and also like time to get away from the game and actually see what you enjoy outside of rugby because you're only going to be doing it for like 15, 20 years if yeah. you're lucky. So actually like having a life outside of it. So sort of like sort in that way. But I think most importantly, trying to like morph your body or change your body to become a better player and like yeah. maybe change your mental um, or yeah, your mental prep to become a, to come back a better player. Yeah. Cause yeah, that's always the thing you need to bounce back from an injury. So yeah. what, what was happening? Cause I remember trying to briefly, um, you know, that support system now I was talking about. It's me, me and a couple of guys on, uh, on outside, what? outside has and masters. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, because I remember I sent you that um, uh, message during lockdown, and you're like, "Oh, I nearly had to have my leg amputated." What happened yeah. there? Because I mean, amputated. you weren't swimming with sharks; you uh, were playing against it them. Was, yeah, <laughs> no, that, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> sure. So, I think end of 2020 when we just started playing again. Um, I did my ankle, um, so it's something, it's called the syndesmosis. Um, well, I know a lot about it because I've had about four of them, but it's like a devastating like, ankle injury. It takes like four to six months post-op. Oh. Um, and then, so I had to go in for surgery and like a few weeks after surgery, because I'd done my left side uh, before I knew what the healing proce- process is supposed to be like. 
and then it just wasn't feeling right mm. and i tried to like bait fast and and you know stay with the pain as like okay no it's just like a little bit of pain or not <laughs> just um, a little headache <laughs> and then Seriously. it just got to the point where i just couldn't tolerate it anymore so i uh, spoke to the physio went back to the specialist so, and he checks it out he feels feels it and he's like okay um what are your plans for the day um you're gonna go home now come back in two hours you're going for surgery i'm like why am i going for surgery now why can't i come on man he's like no if we don't go now we might have to amputate you and i was like whoa this is like crazy and what had happened was um i got an infection inside so what they do is like they draw a tight or a hole through your ankle well, i think it's like the tibia but through your ankle just to, like to keep everything intact and they put like two tight ropes or rods on either side and they like stamp it together and that had gotten infected inside the bone oh, so yeah. yeah i'd like yeah uh, or oh, oh, an infection there and it got it was almost like getting to the point of a septicemia which the specialist didn't tell me before the op so i'm going <laughs> into the op thinking okay flip I just want to keep my leg. Maybe one day I want to play with my kids. You know, I want to be able to like, do that <laughs> stuff. Just... <laughs> so I wasn't even worried about rugby at that point. I was like, flip, I just want to keep my leg. And then after the op, thankfully it was like a successful op. Mm. They took like the tight rope up and I was in the hospital for about two weeks on antibiotics and all Yo. that. Then you told me that actually if you didn't, if you came, like if you waited a bit longer, you could have had a, like a septicemia where you could, could have died. Which is like the infection goes through your whole body and when Into it gets to your heart, uh, it's done. So yeah, I'm glad that uh, went. Yeah. So in, that was yeah, tough. In the immortal words enough. of Cristiano Ronaldo, yeah. inshallah, thank yeah. God, my good heavens, <laughs> that. No, I mean, yeah. and that's crazy. That's just it's it's almost unfathomable that these kind of things happen, and it, it I really think it speaks to the the type of human being you are. Like I, I like to do the most minor tear to a hamstring. I'm like, oh, that's my hockey season. Better, <laughs> better do it, some yeah. video editing. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I nearly died, but back on yeah. the park. And it's yeah. quite crazy. What's the worst injury you've ever had, Chloe? Hmm, I don't think I've ever actually been terribly injured. Have you ever broken a bone? That's always a fun one. <laughs> broken my rib from coughing too much. <laughs> Wow. That's it the was, first. Yeah. This wasn't even like during COVID, it was before, and I just coughed and coughed, and I heard this. What? And then I'd snap my rib, yeah. Oh, no. But it's that's probably the worst. Yeah. 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 So the, apparently, all those broken ribs. Have you had broken ribs? You must um, have no, no, fortunately not. But apparently, like, the rib injuries are painful because, mm. like, you're breathing in and out, so it's just mm. constantly moving. So yeah, it's, and you're it's laughing, well. and yeah, it's feel those ribs. <laughs> no, no. That's some good ribs. No, no. <laughs> that's, a, that's a two for one. It's spur on a Wednesday. Oh, that's absolutely yeah. beautiful. And we wanted to also touch on this briefly as well because I feel it it almost completes the portrait, and that is, of course, your university education because you know the stereotype goes uh oh, rugby players dwarf wow 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 you know everyone wants to be them but when you realize you can't be them then you're like oh let's just insult them even though my whole saturday hinges on whether <laughs> the springboks can win or not um and you know but i mean seriously speaking you you're probably one of the very few especially in south africa who is, is on the cusp of getting a tertiary degree yeah yeah can confirm I, think, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I can confirm that um yeah i think a few years back one of my mates showed me like a statistic about guys who play varsity cup or the springboks who 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 have played varsity cup only one had graduated and that was a period wow. so oh. that is like yeah and he's made some yeah, questionable yeah, decisions yeah. Yeah. no but he's yeah, coming yeah, back yeah, 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 everyone's yeah, excited he's, he's back, coming yeah. back so but you yeah. also have done a hectic degree yeah, you didn't do a BA yeah, like yeah. me. You yeah, know? you didn't. What's it? Um, is it geomatics? Is yeah, that you say? Geomatics. Yeah. Yes. What Man, is that? Because that just sounds like geometry. I always get worried when people ask me to explain what it is because half the time I'm also not so clued up. In <laughs> hashtag student athlete. Um, <laughs> oh god, yeah, that should be a fine. That, they're gonna clip that. Someone's gonna clip that. No, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. So yeah. So the degree is geomatics and I'm in the land surveying stream. So I'm doing a BSc in land surveying. 
And basically what we do is we provide data to like civil engineers, architects and stuff. So we know we those guys that you know along the highway you see a guy with a tripod and a yes. camera. It's not a camera. It's uh yeah. it's a the other lights. Oh, oh I always yeah. I always give them the middle finger. <laughs> Just, no, 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 no. They're not traffic cops either. Oh, fuck you. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. So yeah, that's pretty much it's in a nutshell. It's very like broad, like you can mm. go into like like creating maps or like mm, GIS. Your, your GIS yes mm. that's a big component of it coding is a big component look of at it. YouTube just um, like your <laughs> yes. your Google Maps your ways like that was uh, created by like, yeah. Yeah, people in my field that's so cool so now yeah. here's a heavy question do you ever approach a rock and start using your degree you take pictures you take certain angles you go God, oh, that guy's pants are a bit too low down I'm gonna have um, I know where, you, where you're coming with this, but um, <laughs> yeah, I do have a process of mm. approaching the breakdown. Obviously, <laughs> I can't, I can't give away too much. No, you case, can't. Like, that's, uh, that's someone the... from the position is listening, and exactly. they know how to stop. Me. That's the secret sauce. It's got to be patented. Yeah. yeah. And but uh, I just want to almost clear this up as well. By no means was I intimating because I I've got lots of rugby friends and that's the sort of stuff that rugby players are doff. Um, I just think it's the schedule. There, there's no time well yeah. there's very little time and no, that's what you've is, managed to do is, is make time which is amazing it's difficult you sort of have to choose between what academic sport and your social life and yeah I chose the former for my uh, for the initial stages of my varsity pretty much because I had to um yeah my dad always wanted me to to study now also like I was an academic in school mm. so I felt like I could have done myself great injustice if I didn't like study something and study something worthwhile um, yeah. that would like challenge me because also like like having that sort of like challenge that stimulates me outside of the rugby field but yeah the the schedule was was tough That's uh, crazy. Yeah. Uh, so many times I was like no I can't be doing this I hate this <laughs> And yeah, I'm almost there. Mm. That's, that's what I've always found so impressive is because yeah. like, I'll feel like I'm, and I'm also doing a BA, like yeah. I, I'll be like, oh, I'm so overwhelmed. Then Aren't I realize- Aren't you doing a sock side? Yeah, I'm doing a BA. Uh. So I do, this is why I know what, a bit of what you're studying, because I do EGS, the Environmental oh, yes, and Geographic yes, yeah. Sciences, yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm often just like, oh, I'm so stressed. And then I remember there's people who play rugby or play a professional sport and they're doing a Bachelor of Science yeah. or they're doing medicine. And yeah. you guys are incredible. How did you fit into that sort of Aiki Tiger setup? Was there a lot of pressure? Because, I mean, I've also got tons of friends there and I, you know the environment. And I, I think especially over the last few years, it has become that uh, more of a lot, sort of high performance setup, but there's still mm. obviously that, that Ike's culture of drinking. And, okay, it's lots of fun, yeah. but you know, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of time for that. Yeah, it's definitely changed from when I came into UCT and to, to when I left like the Ike Tigers. I think they've got like a very good structure um, going on there in terms of like trying to drive professionalism, but they sort of, understand that not everyone who plays there wants to become wants to go pro some guys just play there just for the camaraderie and some guys just want to play for the beers after the game yeah. so they understand that and they also understand that um some guys want to go pro and want to use it as a stepping stone into going pro so i think the varsity cup season is more pro professional has a more professional approach than the league season because obviously Varsity Cup is where people like get contracts and stuff. So we take like Varsity Cup very seriously. As you like, could see, like the team did well, very well, like last year. As to when um, I came to UCT, and my decision wasn't, obviously I wanted to become a professional, but I always wanted to go to like a good academic institution where I know I'm studying like something worthwhile. Mm. And also I thought maybe I'd fit in more with the culture at, yes. at UCT than mm. going elsewhere. So than going to uh, Stellenbosch. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say it. But, uh, you didn't, um, you yeah. didn't have to. Yeah. But rumor has it that the whole Aiki Tiger setup changed. It used to be lots of fun when um, Max Price was the VC because his whole philosophy was win, lose, booze. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, uh, no. When, <laughs> okay. when no. last did, did you win, lose, booze? Every day, baby. <laughs> My whole life is winning, losing, and boozing. But before we wrap up here, 
And you know, you got to get back into the gym. There's a, there's a protein yeah, shake just shivering, <laughs> knowing that yeah. Nama's coming Wolf home. Day tomorrow, yeah. Already done the work. Right. Actually, I'm yeah, scared yeah. that we don't yeah, have enough yeah, food to yeah. feed you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'll fast. I need it. I need it. Who is Nama in 10 years? Sure. Um, that is... Um, I would say it's somewhat like a difficult question. I think I'm just so focused on... Yeah, it's cliche. It is like the process now. Because mm. I know there's a lot of... Um, factors that come into it that you can't control mm -hmm. um, ideally um, yeah no I don't want to like give too much yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think Springbok you, you, you'll see you see maybe yes. in 10 years I'm just yes. yeah more focused on yeah taking things day by day would you say you move like you move with silence like the GAs in lasagna that's a little Wayne quotes that I'm kind of messed up a bit yeah, <laughs> but that's yeah, you no. no I think Did you get yeah, that tattooed that on your chest no, no regrets no. <laughs> <laughs> um, no 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 um, yeah I think it is important um, um, to like you know keep some of those things like mm. to yourself I'm more a person like who does the action when things happen yes. then it happens mm. instead of I like, like that yeah. just talking about it yeah more doing in a world of talkers yeah yeah you have yeah. no idea how yeah. high I can fly. Yeah. In the yeah. words of yeah. Michael Scott. So. Michael Scott said that. I didn't. Yeah, watch the space, and you probably yeah. see him in uh, playing in a test match against All Blacks, something like that. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just spitballing. Just saying. Just throwing things out here. Chloe has also. Some would say she carries the podcast, um, and those are all people who are in love with her, myself included. <laughs> and she's, she's got a very fun segment that we play. I don't know how familiar you are with the concept of overrated, underrated. Yeah, I know it all. Well. You got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, got it. Wonderful. So it, it, everyone's like, um, oh, the thing that Gary yeah. V plays. No, 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 no. <laughs> Gary V plays us. <laughs> so we'll give you a topic and you're just going to say overrated, underrated. It's kind of how we like to wrap up the show. All right. Okay. Are you ready? I think I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Stormers, overrated or underrated? Underrated. <laughs> Contractually obliged. <laughs> no, they are. Pay my salary. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'd say, yeah, there's a lot brewing within our squad. I think we've got a very good squad. Is that a Stormers uh, metaphor there? Is this, have you been going to media I, I, training? I, I, I didn't even think of that, but I think we've got a lot of like quality players. And um, I think as soon as like things come together, obviously it was a, a bit tough for all the South African teams to adapt to the mm. way the URC is going. Sure. And I think... Yeah, by the end of the season, things will be coming together. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It looks like they are, they've turned the corner. Yeah. yeah. So, Nama, is living in Iraq overrated or underrated? Living in Iraq. Not Iraq, Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> like Iraq and Baghdad. <laughs> A breakdown. A breakdown. Underrated. Underrated. And so, getting up, knowing you've got the ball or the ref is signaling for a penalty for your team is one of the best feelings ever god I okay. think the answer yeah. to the, or the yeah. beginning of that answer is yeah. underrated yeah. Okay. holy shit yeah. um, the English rugby team overrated or underrated overrated thank you overrated <laughs> as fuck <laughs> Eddie Jones yeah. eh. actually he's quite cool but the rest yeah. of them you know who I hate the most uh, Marcus Smith or oh. Nama just at the bottom of one rock there in the near future just go go this one's for Sam. Yeah, this one's from Kids Eat Toast, bitch. I'm not supposed to do that, but yeah. No, no, it's fine. You'll no, be turn shove, over. Sh shove him on the ground, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's about as violent as you can get. Are shoeys overrated or underrated? Because the Aki Tigers climb into those. Shoeys. Were you down at... Oh, oh he's, no, pretend, he's pretending no, he doesn't know. Oh, That is overrated. No, I was just, that's disgusting. It must taste uh, bad. Yeah. Can you confirm this UCT Aki Tiger rumor for me? And this is actually a genuine one. I'm not... And not the fake ones I made yeah. up earlier. It's called the rhino when you take a can of beer and you smack it against your head until it opens and then you drink it. I think a few guys have done that. I haven't tried it, but yeah, it, it, it does happen. God. It does happen. <laughs> That's I think terrifying. the shoe is the dust boot. Do we call it dust boot? A dust boot. Yeah, okay. Dust boot. You're more of that German. You get the, <laughs> the most senior guy, a guy, Duncan Safi. He was like a size 15. Oh. And then, yeah, he drank out of his boots. I think guys on debut. Um, no. It's not, not nice. <laughs> and, God, Chloe's got the last overrated, underrated before we wrap up. Overrated or underrated podcasting with your friends? Underrated. 
Thank you. <laughs> I've enjoyed this experience. You've enjoyed say. it? Yeah. No, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And w- what better place to wrap than where we're wrapping up right now? Nama, you... I, I, I say this to a lot of people because we, we tr- uh, come on the show because we try to have inspirational people on the show. You, you truly are an inspiration to me. Thank you for making the time. I cannot wait. And I mean that to see what the future holds. And again, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. having me, guys. It's yeah. been wonderful. Really enjoyed it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Chloe, you got anything to say to Nama? Like, bye. Bye. Oh no, that, that was a. Have you seen? Have you seen us do that? Just, I've listened. To you've listened yeah, to. It. Listened so you yeah. just, you, you know, when you someday there's a league in Korea. It's just a heart. It's how you tell people you love them. Can you do it? Or you're not gonna do it. What are you? Um, uh, I choose not to. Yeah. Jeez, it's too masculine <laughs> no, no. to say goodbye. Ah. No, I'm just no. I'm. No, I'm scared it doesn't come out <laughs> the way I'd imagine it would come out. Yeah. The, the risks are uh, real, though. Yeah, anyway, yeah, um, thank yeah, you guys, obviously, yeah. for listening, watching. We hope you enjoyed uh, this episode. We're going to a wedding, so I don't know how many more we'll do before we give up. This might Only be the end of no, this, no, um, We'll have some other content lined up. But yeah, as per usual, do all the youtube stuff. If you do it for Logan Paul, you can do it for us. Um, what is? It? I like ending the show... <sighs> Who's the current president of the United States? Joe Biden. Bye. Bye. Yeah, <laughs> you like that? <laughs> <laughs>